Hi, and welcome to Run Tall with Tim. I'm Tim, and today I'm taking a second look at the New Balance 1080 V11. What's up, everybody? Hey, I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to the channel. If you're new here, I post running shoe reviews on both Wednesday and Saturday mornings, and that's at 5 a.m. Standard Eastern Time here in the U.S. But I also like to post a lot of other running videos as well, but I never know what day of the week that's gonna be or even what time. So if you enjoy watching running shoe reviews and other videos related to running, be sure to subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so that you'll be notified each time that I upload new content. Now, before I get into it too far with the New Balance 1080 V11s, I always like to demonstrate what it looks like to run in the shoes that I'm about to review for you. So let's do that, but then when we return, we're gonna take a real close look at the New Balance 1080 V11 after 50 miles. Now these cost 150 US dollars. That's pretty much on par with what other shoe companies are getting for maximum cushion daily trainers like this. They do come in at 9.3 ounces for a men's size nine on my scales or 265 grams. Now I'm gonna start and just talk a little bit about the fit. I have over 50 miles in on these shoes now and the first time I ran in them, it was 19 degrees Fahrenheit, so a bit chilly underfoot. Now it has warmed up, as you can see from that run sequence here. It's not hot, but I think in that in that run, it was about 60 degrees, somewhere around that ballpark. And you know, they felt really comfortable underfoot. These are fun and enjoyable to run in, and they are, like I said, a maximum cushion shoe. So, but I do wanna talk about the fit. Now it has this stretch knit upper and it is a pretty stretchy up in that toe box. So if I can get a hold of it, but look at that, you know, that, that's a lot of stretch there. The nice thing about that is I think it's pretty accommodating for a lot of different foot shapes and sizes and not all shoes um, are. <laughs> Now, for, if I was going to use a shoe to race in, it probably wouldn't be my first choice. I do have other options that give you a nice race fit feeling up in that toe box and that run a little bit lighter and I think that are a little faster. But that's really not where the shoe shines. This shoe shines in the daily trainer, log lots of miles, feel comfortable at the end of the run in that kind of a category. And if we look at the upper as, it, as we move around on the shoe here, uh, you know, we can see that there's not a whole lot going on here, but what's difficult to see, I think in picture sometimes is while the toe box up here is really stretchy and like I said, accommodating, lots of room to display your toes. As you move around to the side of the shoe, this material gets more stout or stiff. If you wanna get a lockdown feeling across your midfoot, you can't have a ton of stretch there because otherwise you're gonna be end up pulling those laces all the way together. And you know, that is an issue that I had with shoes like uh, the Hoka Clifton 7, for example. That material is stretchy all over the place, it seems like, and I always had to stop it and cinch up my shoes a little more if I wanted to keep that snug uh, lockdown feeling across my midfoot. I didn't have that issue with these at all. That They did a good job, I think, in transitioning from the more stretchy material up in the toe box to give you that comfort that you want, but yet 
you know, balance it with some stiffer material across the midfoot so you can get a nice secure lockdown feeling here. I did enjoy that very much. Now, this struck the construction of the upper, uh, you know, they call it a booty construction, and I would agree with that, but, it, you know, it's an unusual, I guess, booty construction because, you know, the booty part goes up to about the third eyelet where it's just, you know, that's all kind of one piece of material. And then they have a piece of gusset material after that. So it does give you that kind of full gusset booty experience, but it's not a traditional booty style that I'm used to with the upper where it's basically all kind of one piece. So there's a little bit more flexibility there. And the tongue of the shoe, you know, it's semi padded. You know, it's not overly done. There's plenty there though. I didn't have any issues with the padding of the shoes. And, you know, I didn't feel the laces cutting across the, um, the top of my foot at any point. So they have been really comfortable. And it didn't matter if I was going uphill or downhill. And you guys know, especially when you're going downhill, your foot wants to kind of slide forward a little bit. And I thought, felt like this shoe did a good job in just keeping me in place when, that, when I was going uh, you know, on those inclines. Now, if we look at the padding around the heel collar and tab, now this is this is a little bit unusual. You know, they don't really have any padding up there. As you get around to that heel counter, this material is kind of a neoprene. It almost feels like a wetsuit or something that you would wear if you were a diver. It has that kind of a feel to it. And there really isn't any padding really in around the heel collar or, you know, in the uh, kind of in the heel counter area. Now it does a good job and I haven't I haven't had any issues, comfort issues with these. But I did know, I think in the first review, when I put these on, I purposely put them on without socks. And it did feel rough when it was right up against my skin. So I just know going forward, I'm going to have to wear probably a little bit taller socks so that that doesn't cut into my um, the side of my foot at all and cause any kind of discomfort that way. But other than that, I'd say that that's kind of a Kind of a minor issue because you know I felt pretty locked in in the shoe and secure, especially in the in the heel. But now that's a, was a little bit unusual. So I do want to talk about that. Is I did feel locked in and secure in that heel cup, but the sensation that I got, I always felt like it could slip. And the reason for that, and I, you know, I really thought about this a lot uh, as I was you know, thinking about the review for the shoe. Is you know if I take that. Achilles heel flare and I bend it down. That, the height there that you see, that's as far up as really the structural material goes in that heel. And for me, it kind of doesn't go up far enough for me to get a feeling like I'm not going to slip out of the shoe. But I didn't, I, like I said, I didn't slip in it. So it's comfortable that way. I just, the sensation that I got was a little bit awkward for me. I guess that's the best way I can describe it. It was just a little bit awkward. In terms of durability after 50 miles for the upper, including that heel collar and tab, you know, these have held up tremendously well. I don't see any signs of wear at all anywhere on the shoe, other than it being just a little bit dirty from taking them out on the trails, but nothing that the, you know, a scrub brush and a bucket won't fix. So let's talk about the foam underfoot. You know, they have their Fresh Foam X material underfoot here, and they got a lot of it. They, they have a 30 millimeter stack height in the heel and 22 millimeters up in the forefoot, so they have an eight millimeter offset from the heel to the toe. So as I noted, the first time I ran in these shoes, it was 19 degrees Fahrenheit, so well below freezing, but they still felt soft and responsive and cushioned up in that forefoot especially. But now that the weather has warmed up and I have more miles on these shoes, they feel even better. So not only have I not noticed any kind of deterioration or any kind of you know breakdown in the integrity of the foam, I feel like that they just have gotten better over time. I love this foam. It's really soft. It's responsive. You know, I never felt like I was getting slowed up by the foam. Like, you know, I was, it was kind of, you know, sinking in like a marshmallow feeling and not really popping me up. I always felt like I was, you know, bouncing, I guess is the best way I could describe it. I felt like I was bouncing and mostly on the midfoot to the forefoot of the shoe did I get that sensation. I didn't have it so much when I was heel striking. So I think if you're a heel striker, this may not be the best option for you as far as a maximum cushion daily trainer goes. It wasn't uncomfortable. I just didn't feel like I was getting the same amount of energy return as I did when I was kind of bouncing off my uh, forefoot of my, uh, my, uh, through my gait cycle. So that's just something to note. Um, but I do feel like you know, they're really comfortable. 
and they transition smoothly. Um, and a part of that is, you know, if I flip these over and we take a look at the outsole, you know, they've got tons of rubber here. So they're protecting all of that fresh from X material that you have underfoot. But in terms of uh, being able to roll through my gait cycle nice and smoothly, they have all these flex grooves, you know, and that just gives you a little bit more of a natural feeling as you go through uh, your gait cycle. And I did enjoy that. I never felt like I was being constricted or restricted at all with the upper or with that outsole material as I was flowing through uh, my gait cycle. And if we look at the flexibility from that toe, you know, it's it's fairly flexible. It's not it's not super stiff, uh, but it's about right. I mean, it's about exactly where I want a daily trainer to be. If it were a racing shoe, I might be expecting a lot more pop off the toe. But for that, you know, you can look at shoes that have either a more stout midsole material up there or something that might have a nylon plate or a carbon fiber plate, something like that. But now in terms of durability of that outsole rubber material, I think it's held up really well over the last 50 miles. I don't see any signs of wear anywhere. And I have run with these on concrete and pavement. I've run on them in some pretty dicey, icy situations when I first got these back in February. So I think they're holding up really well. And I also want to note too, since uh, since I brought up the weather conditions, I've had these out on some wet uh, weather conditions as well, out on the concrete and pavement. And I felt like I was pretty uh, secure and stuck to the road. So I think that this outsole rubber material gives you some pretty good grip and traction. For a daily trainer, I think these really shine and they feel so good to me to land in when I'm going off. I've had some issues with my ankle of late and these just feel really comfortable to, to run in for me. Hey, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.